podcast. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the best Disney songs performed by or about animated movie villains. Is the lioness's mournful cry. That's my lullaby. Number 30. Who's been painting my roses red? Alice in Wonderland. During her journey, Alice meets some worker cards painting white roses red. She learns that they planted the incorrect ones and are trying to rectify their mistake before the Queen of Hearts finds out. The Queen, she likes some bread, and she's so white to stand. She'd raise a fuss at each of us, but quickly loses head. Goodness! Since this is a thought we dread, we painted the roses red. It seems excessive at first, but starts to make sense as soon as we meet Her Royal Highness. She immediately notices and begins singing this song that puts her temper front and center. Who's been painting my roses red? Who's been painting my roses red? Mad doesn't even begin to cover how upset she is. She literally uproots a tree. As if that wasn't bad enough, her sentencing is also quite harsh. You? No! Two! The deuce, you say? Not me! The tree! That's enough! It's not hard to understand why the cards try to blame each other for the blunder. Number 29, The Elegant Captain Hook, Peter Pan. We won't lie, this song makes a pretty compelling case for joining Captain Hook and his crew. A special offer for today, I'll tell you what I'll do. All those who sign without delay will get a free tattoo. They all look and sound so joyful. Plus, the tune's upbeat melody is enough to get anyone on their feet. Of course, having the kids tied up while they're singing and gallivanting around the ship creates a rather dark image. And at this point in the film, we've seen enough of Hook to know he's not to be trusted. But that's precisely what makes the sneaky moment so interesting. You love the life of a thief. You relish the life of a crook. There's barrels of fun for everyone, and you get treasures by the top. The elegant Captain Hook strikes the perfect balance between fun, persuasive, and threatening, making it impossible to ignore. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Number 28, Heffalumps and Woozles, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. While Heffalumps and Woozles are less like villains in the traditional sense, they are actually considered the main antagonists in the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Beware, beware, be a very, 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 very. A Heffalump or Woozle is very confusal. The Heffalump or Woozle's very sly. 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 This is largely due to the fact that they love honey just as much as Pooh and are willing to steal the cuddly bear's personal supply in order to get it. Regardless of the somewhat tame nature of these guys, the dream sequence in which they made their big screen appearance scared Pooh and us to Eeyore's gloomy place and back. They're a terrible sight! They tie themselves in horrible knots. They come in stripes! Oh, polka dots! Beware! Beware! You very, very, very You may recognize that floating Winnie the Pooh meme from this, and that's honestly all the confirmation we need that this scene is weird. Though the song is admittedly pretty catchy. If you're looking for a good nightmare sequence, no one does it like old school Disney. The fun is what you covet. You'll find that they love it because they'll go so up the things you prize. Number 27, The Headless Horseman, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. There's things with horns and saucer eyes. Some with fangs about this size. Some are fat and some are thin. And some don't even wear their skin. Why did Disney stop doing these anthology movies? In The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, we get two tales, The Wind in the Willows and The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. The latter explores the legend of the Headless Horseman, which makes it a cozy, nostalgic watch for October. A wind's boots to have a midnight jamboree. They break it up with English glee. Ghosts are bad, but the one that's cursed is the Headless Horseman. He's the worst. Not only is it narrated by Bing Crosby, but he sings all of this story's songs, too. The Headless Horseman number takes place during a party where Ichabod's rival attempts to one-up him and manages to succeed by scaring him with this fable. He's out looking for a top chop, so don't stop to figure out a plan. 
You can't reason with a headless man. Still, it's sort of difficult to be scared when this song is a whole spoonful of jazzy fun. Number 26. High Diddle Dee Dee, Pinocchio Pinocchio meets Honest John before he's had the chance to learn the invaluable don't talk to strangers lesson. Before he even makes it to his first day of school, he finds himself in a world of trouble. Why, he's a natural born actor, eh, Giddy? <laughs> And I'm going straight to the top. Why, I can see your name in lights. And considering he's just recently come alive, he takes the fox's misleading name a little too literally. John needs to lure Pinocchio into his trap. And what better way to do that than by singing about how success, fame, and fortune await him in the theater? A high silk hat and a silver cane, a watch of gold with a diamond chain. I'm diddly day, a night as life is gay. It would probably be hard for a regular kid to resist this catchy tune. So it's no wonder Pinocchio ultimately gives in to the temptation. You wear your hair on a pompadour, you ride around Wait. in a coach and four, you stop and buy on a candy store, and act Hold on the life for me. Pinocchio. Number 25, Mad Madam Mim, The Sword in the Stone. Arthur has no idea what he's in for when he falls into Madam Mim's house. Sounds like someone's sick. How lovely. <laughs> I do hope it's serious. Something dreadful. At first glance, she seems like a regular old lady. But appearances can be deceiving. As it turns out, she's anything but. The glee and joy with which she describes her sinister ways through this song never fails to give us chills. With only a touch, I have the power. Zim, zap, rim, bim, do with her a flower. <laughs> I find delight in the gruesome and grim. Oh, that's terrible. Thank you, my boy. And the way she illustrates her powers during the upbeat tune adds a twisted layer of darkness to the whole affair. Her energy is chaotic, to be sure, but it's also kind of contagious. We'd be lying if we said we weren't hooked on her every word. The magnificent, marvelous, mad, 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 mad. <laughs> Number 24, Your Only Second Rate, The Return of Jafar. So, yes, the old direct-to-video sequels aren't super well-known or loved, but there are a few gems hidden here and there. After all, if you're going to call Genie of all people second rate, you'd better have the musical chops to back it up. Now here's your chance to get the best of me. Hope your hand is hot. Come on, clown, let's see what you've got. We hate to give Jafar any sort of credit, but his bit of intimidation isn't half bad. You think your cat's a meanie, but your tiger's tame. You've got a lot to learn about the genie game. So for your education, I reiterate, you're only second rate. If there's one thing Genie can appreciate, it's style and flair, which makes it doubly sad that he's defeated in such a grand display. There are, of course, some better Aladdin songs in the franchise, but this one feels undeniably true to Jafar's drama. Go ahead and zap me with the big surprise. Slap me in a trap. Cut me down to size. I'll make a great escape. It's just a piece of cake. You're only second rate. Number 23, Trust in Me, the Python song, The Jungle Book. There's no doubt that the voice actors behind these roles have big jobs to do. Conveying a sense of evil through one's voice alone is no small feat. But when they succeed, the results are truly special. One example of this is Sterling Holloway's performance as Ka in The Jungle Book. You don't trust me. No. Then there's nothing I can do to help. <laughs> you want to help me? Certainly. Trust in Me is a slow song that hypnotizes Mowgli. The visuals are obviously there, as fewer creatures are scarier than snakes. And Holloway truly brings the number to life with his calm and terrifyingly collected tone. You can sleep safe and sound, knowing I am around. The way he embodies the character's essence is incredibly impressive. From his pacing to his pronunciation of the numerous S sounds, he makes the moment feel believable. Sail on a silver mist, slowly and surely your senses will cease to resist. Number 22, This is the Thanks I Get, 
Wish. Say what you want about this movie. That's it. That's the end of the sentence. Say what you want. We will give it a bit of praise for this number, however. I'd give the clothes off Benito's back If you really needed that I'd be the first one to volunteer Henry, if your home were to crumble Or if you were in trouble The song itself really isn't half bad. The main problem is that it doesn't really feel like a villain number. But we love Chris Pine in anything he does, so that makes this one at least a partial win in our books. I let you live it for free and I don't even charge you it. Awkward lyrics aside, this is enjoyable enough to belt out in the car after a day of feeling like we're always giving more than we get. And this is the thanks I get. This is the thanks I get. Number 21, It's Our House Now, Mickey's House of Villains. Okay, everybody, now it's time for a change of pace. Right. Huh? Right you are, Mickey. It's Halloween, you know, and with just the right touch. If you've ever wanted a Disney villain medley, look no further. Led by Jafar, a ton of classic baddies get their moment to shine. Even those who don't have their own musical numbers like Maleficent and Hades. It's a real treat to see them all together, especially as they devise their takeover and begin to terrorize some of our favorite protagonists. It's our house now! It's our house now! It's the fact you can't ignore! Shut the window! Lock the door! It's our house now! The idea of all the Disney characters dwelling in one place is already a lot of fun. But having the villains seize control for Halloween and give everyone else the boot is a really stellar premise. Not to mention, the song itself is super underrated. How have we been sleeping on this one? Number 20, I Wanna Be Like You, The Jungle Book. Now I'm the king of the swingers, oh, the jungle VIP. I've reached the top and had to stop, and that's what's bothering me. Oh, Louis Prima, we miss you every day. Though not the main baddie of this film, King Louis is considered a supporting antagonist, given his penchant for abduction and general intentions of hostage holding. This sounds nothing like a villain song, but it's not really trying to be one either. Now don't try to kid me, man cub. I made a deal with you. What I desire is man's red fire to make my dream come true. King Louis above all wants to learn how to make fire, and it's a lot easier to do that if Mowgli likes and trusts him. Lucky for us, we get a fantastic swing jam out of it. Oh, ooby doo, I want to be like you. Hop the ooby doo, but I want to walk like you. Chip, talk like you. Chip, chew. Weepy dee, but you see it's true. Number 19, Remember Me, Coco. If this were Miguel or Hector's version, it would be ranked much higher. But because it was not only stolen by Ernesto, but also mutilated into a high energy number, we're clocking it here. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart. Remember me. Ernesto de la Cruz's iteration of this song sucks all the emotion out of the original, and it shows. Remember me. Don't let it make you cry. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. Even without hearing the way it was intended to sound, something just feels off in his performance. Its extravagant display alone is enough to imbue a sense of superficiality, something keen audiences will probably have sniffed out early on. Know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. Number 18, The Mob Song, Beauty and the Beast. The Beast will make off with your children. He'll come after them in the night. No. We're not safe till his head is mounted on my wall. We've all heard of mob mentality, but this song really takes it up a notch, proving how contagious it can be. Gaston talks a big game throughout the film and makes the villagers believe he's the person to trust. Not your push, not your push. Screw your courage to the sticking place. We're counting on Gaston to lead the way. He goes on and on about how terrible the beast is, riling them up. In other words, they fall for his fear-mongering. What follows is a captivating musical number that's characterized by panic and anger. We don't like what we don't understand. In fact, it scares us, and this monster is mysterious at least. 
Despite the Beast having never heard any of them, and over Belle's objections, the people mobilize with Gaston as their leader. This song perfectly personifies the angry mob's frantic energy. Pitchforks, torches, and all. Number 17. Snuff Out the Light, Yzma's Song, The Emperor's New Groove We wish so badly we could include Yzmopolis on this list, but that song was unfortunately in an episode of The Emperor's New School, and our list is considering movies alone. Now this one is a tiny bit of a cheat since it's technically a deleted song, but we think it's worth it for the absolute bop that it is. When I was a girl at my daddy's side, Papa the Royal Mortician revealed to me in secret signs the mark of a magician. We don't have to tell you about the unmitigated legend that is Eartha Kitt. Her performance speaks for itself. Every little ray of sunshine robbed me of my youth. Who to blame, who the one who to curse? You know, the only one to blame would be my enemy, the sun. Not only did she put everything she had into voicing Yzma, but singing as her was downright spectacular. It's a whole crime that this song never made the final cut. Number 16, My Lullaby, The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. This definitely isn't the lullaby of your childhood. And while we wouldn't exactly call it soothing, it's definitely a memorable piece. Sleep, my little Kovu. Let your dreams take wing. One day when you're big and strong, you will be a king. Night. After Zira gently sings Kovu to sleep, she takes things up several notches. The number gradually intensifies as she lays out her plan to have him one day take power. She doesn't mince words, painting a terrifyingly vivid picture. The melody of angry growls, a counterpoint of painful howls, yeah! a symphony of death, oh my, that's my love. We know sequels tend to get a bad reputation, and Scar left some huge villainous paws to fill. Still, Zira holds her own, commanding respect and inspiring fear through this soul-stirring song. We definitely wouldn't want to get on her bad side. And then our flag will fly against a blood-red sky. Number 15, In the Dark of the Night, Anastasia. In the dark of the night I was tossing and turning. And the nightmare I had was as bad as can be. Since Disney now owns this movie, we're considering it fair game. And thank the movie industry gods we get to include it because it's such a cool track. A lich sorcerer is about as evil as they come, so his villain number really has to reflect that. And boy does it ever. My curse made each of them pay, but one little girl got away. Little Anya, beware, Rasputin's away. It's powerful, sinister, and creepy by the boatloads, mostly because Rasputin has been dead for a long while by the time he sings this. Fredanya, Anya, your grace, farewell. With a harsh rasp and deep, graveling tone, this character feels perfectly voiced, both by Christopher Lloyd when speaking and Jim Cummings while singing. She will feel that her nightmares are real. In the dark of the night, she'll be <laughs> Number 14, Prince Ali Reprise, Aladdin. The Aladdin movies have no shortage of enthralling villain songs. Your only second rate proves that Jafar hasn't lost his spunk. And Saluk makes sure we know he's a force to be reckoned with in Are You In or Out. Gotta know without a doubt. I'm the one you need for a dirty deed. I'm the best. Success is guaranteed. Still, Jafar's reprise of Prince Ali in the first film remains the most intimidating number of them all. After getting his hands on the lamp, and thus Genie, he uses his first wish to become Sultan, and his second to become the most powerful sorcerer. That's when he takes the song that was first used to introduce Ali Ababwa to the world and flips it on its head. This meat a blast from your past, whose lies were too good to last. 
Say hello to your precious Prince Kali! His version is much more menacing, and rather riveting, as it exposes the truth about Aladdin's identity. Number 13, Love is an Open Door, Frozen. When we first hear this duet, it seems like a sweet, albeit somewhat naive, love song. And maybe it's the party talking or the chocolate fondue. <laughs> but with you, but with you, I found my place. I see your face, and, and it's, it's nothing like I've, I've ever known before. before. But when Hans's evil intentions are revealed towards the end of the film, it takes on a whole new meaning. He was trying to manipulate Anna with every word he uttered, which colors the cheerful musical moment differently. I've never met someone who, who thinks so much like me. Jinx! Jinx again! Our mental synchronization can have but one explanation. You and I were just meant to be. While she thought she was singing with and falling for the man of her dreams, she was actually being tricked. He saw a young woman desperate for love and used that to make a power play. There's no doubt that it's one of Disney's more unconventional villain songs. It's also sinister, manipulative, and downright cruel. Love is an open door. door. Can I say something crazy? <laughs> Will you marry me? <gasps> Number 12, The World's Greatest Criminal Mind, The Great Mouse Detective. How many Disney villains do you know who walk around plotting while wearing a suit and tie? Of course, Radigan's no ordinary bad guy. He has an air of sophistication, class, and intelligence that sets him apart from the rest. His appeal is made all the more obvious through this song, which flaunts his exploits and makes a pretty convincing case for why he's an unparalleled criminal. But don't let the fancy outfit and upbeat music fool you. Radigan's a ruthless fellow who isn't afraid to eliminate anyone who rubs him the wrong way. Oh, my dear Bartholomew, I'm afraid that you have gone and upset me. You know what happens when someone upsets me. His followers undoubtedly respect him, but more than that, they fear him. Number 11, Shiny, Moana. For Tamatoa, bling is the thing. His blinged out appearance keeps him fed and looking absolutely stunning. I was a drab little crab once. Now I know I can be happy as a clam because I'm beautiful, baby. That seems like a pretty good setup to us. His performance is so alluring that you almost forget he's a bad guy. What can we say? The glamour and sass are simply addictive. Did your granny say, listen to your heart? Be who you are on the inside. I need three words to tear her argument apart. Your granny lied. Make no mistake, we are not fans of his evil ways, but there's no denying he has style. The song's melody is snappy and its visuals are extremely appealing. Plus, it contains some insanely hilarious and clever lyrics. What else would you expect from Lin-Manuel Miranda? Tamatoa may be the most glitzy Disney villain we've ever met, and we're not mad about it. For just like you, I made myself a work of art. I'll never hide. I can't. I'm too shiny. Watch me dazzle like a diamond in the rough. Strut my stuff. My stuff is so shiny. Number 10, Oogie Boogie Song, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Having Santa Claus kidnapped so that he could take over Christmas definitely wasn't the best idea Jack Skellington ever had. But things get really bad when Oogie Boogie gets his hands on the jolly bearded man. Well, 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 what have we here? Everyone loves Santa. He travels around the world and gives kids presents. What's not to love? Well, according to the Boogeyman, a lot. He makes it clear from the start of this creepy tune that he doesn't get the hype surrounding the revered character. He's ancient. He's ugly. I don't know which is worse. 
laughs. I might just split a seam now if I don't die laughing first. In fact, Oogie Boogie spends much of the number actively insulting him and dismisses his demand to be released. It's a bold, blunt, and spooky piece to say the least. It's hopeless. You're finished. You haven't got a prayer. Cause I'm Mr. Oogie Boogie and you ain't going nowhere. Number 9. Savages, Pocahontas Pocahontas has serious cultural issues, to be sure, but there's definitely something to be said for its songs. From the moment the settlers arrive, it's clear they have bad intentions. The man in charge of the expedition, Governor Ratcliffe, wants to mine the land for any and all gold it has. He craves wealth and power, and isn't afraid to sing enthusiastically about it. Shovel in a shovel, uncover those lovely pebbles that sparkle and shine. It's gold, and it's mine, mine, mine. And while Mine, Mine, Mine is a captivating track, the film's best villain song comes later, as war erupts between the Powhatan people and the Englishmen. Savages is a particularly interesting number as we see both groups describing their disdain for the other. It's frantic, and you can almost feel everyone getting pumped for battle. Savages, savages, they're even human, now we sound the <laughs> Number 8. Mother Knows Best, Tangled We've heard of overprotective parents, but Gothel's really on another level. You know why we stay up in this tower? I know, but... that's right, to keep you safe and sound, yeah. Of course, she's not actually Rapunzel's mother. Rather, she keeps Rapunzel trapped inside the tower so she can have access to the magic her locks provide. So when Rapunzel asks to go out, Gothel shuts the idea down with this song. Gothel tries to scare her claiming she would never be safe outside of the confines of the tower. And her. One way or another, something will go wrong, I swear! Ruffians, thugs, poison ivy, quicksand, cannibals and snakes, the plague. No! Yes, but... also large bugs, men with pointy teeth, and stop no more, you'll just upset me! The number's brilliance lies in the fact that she disguises her spiteful intentions under the guise of motherly love. Yet, it's Rapunzel's hair she's trying to protect, not the girl herself. She couldn't possibly risk her eternal fountain of youth getting away. I love you most. Don't forget it, you regret it. Mother knows best. Number 7. Gaston, Beauty and the Beast to say Gaston is the most self-important Disney character ever is probably an understatement. His whole personality revolves around how much he loves himself. It's such a big part of who he is, in fact, that his tune is named after him. As a specimen, yes, I'm intimidating. I wanna call it Gaston. The number gives us a peek at his inflated ego and quickly makes it clear that his vanity knows no bounds. Gaston is dangerously narcissistic, yet the villagers are obsessed with him. There's no man in town <laughs> as admired as you. You're everyone's favorite guy. Everyone's awed and inspired by you. It's pretty easy to understand why Belle doesn't want to marry him. They're basically polar opposites, but it's an incredibly fun and energizing tune that convincingly sings his praises and always gets stuck in our head. Number 6. We Don't Talk About Bruno, Encanto. We don't talk about Bruno. I know. You might be surprised to see this one show up here, as there are conflicting thoughts about whether or not this really is a villain song. Seven foot frame, right so long as bad. When he calls your name, it all fades to black. Bruno isn't a villain, after all, but he was definitely presented as one at first. 
and that's kind of exactly what makes the song so antagonistic, too. The rest of the family has unintentionally made themselves the bad guys by shunning Bruno out, effectively shooting the messenger. If Encanto does one thing, it's create nuance in its characters, and this ensemble song is certainly no exception. Plus, you know, it's phenomenal. Its monumental popularity and replay value was all the proof we needed for that. Number 5. Friends on the Other Side – The Princess and the Frog You should never be little strangers you meet on the street, or anyone else, really. After all, you never know who they might be or what connections they may have. Prince Naveen learns that lesson the hard way when he gets involved with Dr. Facilier. I got friends on the other side. He's got friends on the other side. That's an echo, gentlemen. Just a little something we have here in Louisiana. A little parlor trick, don't worry. At first glance, he seems like an ordinary charlatan, which prompts Lawrence, the royal valet, to dismiss him. Mistake. As Facilier sings about his otherworldly connections, you can't help but be pulled in by his hypnotic performance. I look deep into your heart and soul. You do have a soul, don't you, Lawrence? Make your wildest dreams come true. His sultry voice and the scene's stunning visuals are nothing if not spellbinding. So it's not hard to understand why Naveen and Lawrence both make a deal with him. But you know what they say, be careful what you wish for. But if you wait, don't blame me. You can blame my friends on the Number 4. Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians Unlike the majority of Disney villain numbers, this one isn't sung by the movie's antagonist. Rather, it's about her, which only adds to its appeal. Do you like my new song? As soon as Roger starts humming the snazzy melody, you can tell it has promise. It simply needs some complimentary lyrics, and when he sees Cruella de Vil pulling up, the perfect words come to him almost magically. Cruella de Vil. That's it. Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil, if she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. It's a catchy number that's just eerie enough to make you want to sing along. And more importantly, it's amazingly prophetic. Roger's just messing around, but he has no idea how right he is about Cruella. The world was such a wholesome place until Cruella, Cruella de Vil. Number 3. Poor Unfortunate Souls, The Little Mermaid Ursula is an incredibly compelling character. We know she's evil, yet listening to her belt out Poor Unfortunate Souls kind of makes us want to root for her. Those poor unfortunate souls, so sad, so true. They come flocking to my cauldron crying spells, Ursula, please, and I help them. Yes, I do. The song just captures her essence flawlessly, and she lures us in with her tantalizing voice. Even if you think you know better than to listen to her, it's hard not to be tempted by this number. Her witty attitude and the beguiling lyrics come together seamlessly and make for a persuasive performance. The men up there don't like a lot of blabber. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Yes, on land it's much preferred for ladies not to say a word, and after all, dear, what is idle prattle for? Ursula really makes it seem like her deal is the best option there is. So it's easy to see how Ariel, and countless others before her, fall for the trap. And sign the scroll, got some jets up, now I've got her boys, the boss is on a roll. This poor unfortunate soul. Number 2. Be Prepared, The Lion King Jeremy Irons and Jim Cummings together delivered a masterclass in voice acting with this performance. 
The powerful tone of Scar's voice gives him a grave and authoritative presence, making this song feel dangerously prestigious. Well, at last I am given my dues, and injustice deliciously swear. Watching him hatch a plan to eliminate his family and take over the kingdom is nothing short of frightening. The number is undeniably bold, commanding, and unnerving. In fact, the hyenas actually start goose-stepping. The future is littered with prizes, and though I may proceed, the point that I must emphasize is, you won't get a sniff without me! At the end of the day, Scar is a deeply unsettling character, just as a good villain should be. And this number wonderfully encapsulates the mesmerizing terror he inspires. What more could you possibly ask for in a Disney villain song? Yes, our teeth and ambitions are red. Be prepared. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Hellfire, the Hunchback of Notre Dame Many villains sing about big or mystical things like power, but Claude Frollo's signature track is about lust, something you don't hear about too often in Disney movies. Hellfire, this fire The song's grounded and realistic subject matter is precisely what makes it so sinister. As Frollo stands by the burning fire, he blames Esmeralda for his own urges. Don't let the siren cast her spell. Don't let her fire sear my flesh and bone. Destroy Esmeralda and let her taste the fires of hell. Or else let her be mine and mine alone. His attitude is disturbing, to put it mildly, yet he truly believes he's some sort of righteous soul. The way Tony J brings a depraved and vile energy to the song is absolutely chilling. That, combined with the mystic music and scorching visuals, creates a truly harrowing number. And it never fails to make our blood run cold. Choose me or your pile. Which Disney villain song are you guilty of belting out in the shower? Let us know in the comments. I'd rather be shiny like a treasure from a sunken pirate wreck. Scrub the deck and make it look shiny. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.